What about your books? All ready to read them. You're sitting around thinking who was better between Robert De Niro and Robert Mitchum. We both know it was Sideshow Bob. Because this week we're doing Cape Fear from 1991. With a stellar cast including Robert De Niro, Nick Nolte, Jessica Lange and Juliette Lewis. The original tells the story of a convicted man released from prison and seeks revenge against the law attorney. Responsible for sending him to prison. The remake turns it on its head where a convicted rapist released 14 years after his sentence seeks revenge on the family of the lawyer who actually originally defended him so this film is fucking amazing i love the original the original's brilliant but there's something about this film where it's a martin scorsese film so it's got that clout behind it already the cast is fucking unbelievable robert de niro he plays a lot of quite reserved characters even you know he's some more psychotic crazy characters like taxi driver is still quite like a reserved persona having him play this southern over the top constantly spouting religious lines or philosophies and covered in tattoos bizarre over the top rapist murderer guy is just so unusual in his back catalogue of roles i can now learn you i can now read you I can outthink you, and I can out-philosophize you, and I'm gonna outlast you. You think a couple of whacks to my good old boy Gus gonna get me down? It's gonna take a hell of a lot more than that, counselor, to prove you're better than me. And it's so much fun to see him get into it. But also what I love about this film is it's kind of like a love letter to films from the era that the original was made in. The visual camera style, the way some of the scenes are set up, the over-the-top dramatic musical score, even like the weird superimposed lightning and thunder that's coming in from the distance at times at first i saw it i was like that's bad special effects but i'm pretty sure it was intentional and it was trying to invoke that sort of visual style you'd get from films from the 1960s era and i can't really think of another film that's attempted to emulate the style from the 1960s and 1950s filmmaking in as good a way as this film does i've got a confession to make i i chose this film because i thought follow a group on Facebook called Obscure Simpsons Characters. So what it does is it focuses on the the characters that you only see in like one or two episodes, Mm. but like great characters like Dr. Nick and shit like that. There was a whole thread about films that you didn't know were films and you saw The Simpsons first. So they were talking about, you know, that great episode where it's taking a piss out of One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. Yeah. yeah. where, Where the chief like throws the dishwasher through their thing. You know, it was talking about the great tree house of horror one where it's the shining no no beer and no yeah. tv make homer go crazy makes homer something something something, something. <laughs> i've seen the, the, the exact episode 10 times and i didn't realize it was based on this mm. so i was like fuck it i gotta check this out i think this might be my favorite de niro performance really but there's others jake lamotta and raging ball but i just love the magnetism and like i don't care what you say but that southern accent makes it free as a bird apparently you go everywhere you want with whomever that much freedom could maybe get a fellow into trouble what do you think like if it was any other accent it wouldn't be as good but it's just the magnetism and and the way he quotes and how manipulative he is mm. and how iconic some of the scenes are that scene at the start when he when they don't even know that he's following him around where he's smoking a cigar in a cinema it's been memes like loads of laughing so not yeah yeah like, it's just fucking classic the whole look with the hair all the tattoos the hawaiian and shirt. it's kind of more realistic as well because like a lot of time in films like scary gangster guy or scary criminal guy is like slick and well spoken and it's like not like a lot of time mm. they're more like this loud and pretty charismatic pretty funny pretty imposing and pretty fucking weird yeah <laughs> and you know he's a lot closer representation to what these kind of people are like a lot of the time and he is terrifying because he's very believable this guy went into prison 
Hampton for 14 years, one of the early confrontations with Nick Nolte's lawyer. He tells him, at first I was reading like Barney the Dinosaur yeah. or some kid's yeah. book. And then he started to read law and he eventually knew the law inside out, probably, probably better than some lawyers working today. And that's how he figured out that, oh, my defense attorney fucked, fucked me. You know, he buried something. He fucked me over. He didn't do his job properly. Because he says himself, you know, Nick Naughty, when he first comes over and takes his car keys out, doing his first slow, lower tier wave of intimidation. And he says, why not go after the judge or the, you know, the, the prosecutor? And he's just like, they were just doing their job. You didn't do your job. I deserve a fair trial even the other lawyers who he admits to who confides the fact that i buried evidence that the girl was promiscuous that he raped that might have helped him because you know this guy was a monster but even they're like nah you don't do that i mean lawyers can go to prison for not giving their clients a proper trial because no matter who you are that is how it works you're supposed to get a fair trial some folks just don't have the right to the best defense no, of course they deserve the best defense but i mean if you had seen what he did to this girl buried the report I mean, if it was your own daughter, Tom, yeah, I mean... Buried the report. Jesus, man. The, the more I think about it, it's a madness, man. Like, you're not supposed to discuss the case with anyone else. Obviously, you got to discuss it with your wife and shit. It's supposed to be confidential. If you're trying to save this guy from going to prison, who legit is a madman. <laughs> mm. I'm quite competitive in a lot of stuff. If I was a lawyer... I would want to win every single case. I would want an unbeaten record. Yeah, that's such a good point. I didn't even think of that side of it. I would want an unbeaten record, Declan. And it's kind of yeah. like an actor with roles. When they review scripts, they'll look at the cases and weigh it up and be like, I have no chance of winning this. So no, mm. next. No one's going to hire a lawyer on a 10 losing streak. So like I said, he goes in there as this uneducated white trash bum. Can't read, can't write. You were seeing it as he's leaving his prison for cell for the last time and he's got Nietzsche up on the wall and Hitler's Mein Camp and all these mm. philosophy books and he's such so well read and full of ideas now and he sees the world in a totally different way but he's not had the Nelson Mandela Morse go to prison. He is hell-bent on revenge. And he doesn't want to just kill Nick Nolte. He wants to destroy every aspect of his life. He wants to mentally deconstruct him, supplant himself in the central male figure role to his daughter. He wants to destroy the trust between him and his wife. He kills his dog. Like, he fucks him yeah, up. Yeah, yeah, It was like he was winding down. Just winding down like an old clock. And then all of a sudden, he just stopped. And then he died. He just died before the vet even got here. The way he does it is so menacing, but just so funny as well. They'll go to a parade, and out of all the people, somehow he's standing directly opposite him. You see, from Nick Nolte, from being the consummate, smart, professional lawyer, starts to lose his rag when his family involved starts pushing him. Mm. He's saying, I will sue you, sir. Yeah, he's like, <laughs> you don't have the right to push me around <laughs> yeah, like this. Watch my arm. Happy bro. What's with you, buddy? You have no right to be pushing me around like that. I'll just Washington Parade. I wasn't pranking on nobody. You getting so upset about? You like that? I'll sue you. Nick Nolte's trying his best. He's telling all his other colleagues. His supervisor says, you did what? You buried evidence. Oh. And you seemingly deserve this. He's stalking them. Kill the dog, as you said. I'm putting myself in Nick Nolte's shoes. It's one thing for people to openly threaten you, Declan. But it's the way that he does it. I would be shitting myself. It's nearly like a horror film. Mm. But instead of about like monsters, it's about the legal system. Because, you know, on one hand, Robert De Niro's character is a victim of the legal system. What if you're own defense attorney fucks you over and you don't even understand what's happened that's a fear but then there's also the aspect of he's gone into prison and now he understands the law so well and he knows exactly how to terrorize him always within yeah. the remit of the law someone's ruining your life the police know they're ruining your life but they're ruining your life to the extent the law allows and can't do anything about you know as well as i do what that means I mean, last night, there he was. He was behind our house. Ah, oh, tempted B and E. Well, no, 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 not exactly. I mean, he was sitting on a wall that bounds our property. <laughs> it's not even trespassing, Sam. I mean, come on, what can I say? I mean, get a restraining order. 
I did have follow one this morning. The hearing's in 10 days. I'm literally fucked. Like, this guy could kill me at any time. He's completely crazy. Or he could just continue already ruining my life like he is, and nothing can be done about it. Nick Nolte's like, no, he's going to try and rape my wife and my daughter. And he's like, mate, you're a lawyer. You know about the law. You know we can't arrest someone for thinking about raping someone. First, he approaches them. He's trying to, like, offer them money. And he offers them 10 grand. Well, what shall be my compensation, sir, for being held down sodomized by four white guys or four black guys? Shall my compensation be the same? What is the formula for compensation, sir? Well, how about $10,000 in cash? And he's like, oh, let's work that out. I did this long in prison. All right, so you're off me like 30 cents a day. That's below the minimum wage. Yeah, so and he's like, fuck you. This was a great scene, Declan, because I recently read an article about someone who was imprisoned, I think, in the UK, by the way, for 25 years or something ridiculous for raping someone, and he never ra raped mm. someone. He said, yes, I'm going to get millions and millions of pounds, but I'll never get back 25 years. So he quickly realises money ain't going to do shit here. This guy has moved to this town to go after him. We also find that they've moved to this town quite recently as well i think only the past couple of years and as we're seeing the pressure go on the family and the wife and the not so much the daughter but the daughter's getting stressed out by the parents arguing and we start to see the family comes untethered and what i really like about this film as well is the fact that everyone's very human everyone's very grounded and realistic like it's quite machiavellian the daughter is 15 and she's coming of age and she's getting interested in sex and she really felt like a realistic 15 year old who's getting curious about things and her parents won't let her grow up but she's also an idiot and she hasn't grown up yet the wife is beautiful and like looks like the perfect wife we discover that she was going months where she was seemingly depressed and wouldn't leave the bedroom and was falling apart and we understand that sort of thing better nowadays with mental health and he ended up having an affair i think that's why they actually moved to this new town after the mm. affair to try and have a second go at things but he's sort of not having an affair yet but building towards an affair where with this young woman who's enamored with him at his law firm we see him playing squash thing what's that one in a room it's that you... shit fucking sport you play. i call it smashing it against the wall yeah, i think you're only allowed to play <laughs> if you're a lawyer we're not doing anything no i know that yet <laughs> okay you know. no fine fine maybe you're right why, does your wife mind? <laughs> well, my wife doesn't even know you exist, which most well, certainly is for the best. She clearly does fancy it, mm. and she's just a lowly clerk at the law firm, like a lowly peasant mm. administrator. Very sexy, actually. I really yeah, like, very, I found her very, very attractive. She had a sort of mousy, but very beautiful at the same time. Like, it was a weird, like, duality going on. As we learn more and more about their characters, I started off rooting for Nick Nolte, like, mm. this guy's but. I ended up by the end of the film hating Nick Nolte. He's more, he is a hunk of shit. Yeah, like, yeah I right, hated him it? and I wanted um, Robert De Niro's character to win. Robert De Niro's character. Don't go that far, like he was about to rape his wife. No, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't I didn't like the wife either you know that street song you're fit but my gosh don't you know mm. and she would just like run around and like do all this shit you know the daughter I had a bit of time for she had a bit of rebellion that's interesting I, I thought you would find her most annoying one of his angles of attack to systematically ruin his life is he pretends to be the new drama teacher <laughs> yeah oh, that's so good and he actually seduces Juliet Lewis not just romantically but he really gets into her mind he gets into the philosophy oh your parents don't want you to grow up you know they think you know weed is this bad she's thing been done. really it opens up your mind he's talking about all these different ideas and stuff and it you know it resonates she's at that age where you're fucking still stupid and your brain's full of nothing but you you're driving the brain of essentially an adult new ideas and interesting possibilities resonate with you and you want to grab onto them i had to sneak it off my parents shelf you know but <laughs> His his descriptions are pretty vivid, I'd yeah. say. In one of the novels, I don't recall which, he describes an erection as a piece of lead with wings on it. I didn't read that part. Of course not. You're not allowed. Your parents don't want you to achieve adulthood. That's natural. They know the pitfalls of adulthood. When I was a kid, I watched it, and I basically understood the scene, but watching it now as an adult, you really understand, like, he played seduction, but also the very specific type of seduction of a creepy older guy preying on that young female mind. It's just, I've never seen a better scene executed. He is, unfortunately, a nonce, as well as a mm. rapist. Um, I mean, the original girl he was in prison for raping, I believe, was 16. Okay, uh, that's legal in this particular. 
Well, it's not legal to rape them, but well, yeah, it's true. Yeah, it's, it's still creepy no, when no, you're no, a grown no, adult. Yeah, she's obviously at home, it's like very late at night. The teacher's like, I'm just ringing your house phone at like 10 p.m. at night. Imagine if a teacher just rang your old phone and was like, How are you? You're right. I'd be like, Fuck off. Never call my house phone ever. I love the way <laughs> again. you get the little insight into his living conditions where oh, you see yeah. the different things thrown about and the dumbbells. And then he's on having the phone he's call. Like upside down. Upside down, yeah. hanging up like a bat. Oh. He's like an evil villain. He I is loved it. ruining Nick Nolte's life. He's seducing his daughter. He's planning to rape the wife soon. He's killed his dog. And he just seems like he's having the best time. If you wanna do At the end of the day, Declan, not good on him, but he's been, as he keeps saying, I was stuck in a two by eight cell for 14 years. Yeah. Like, now he's out. Rape by four white <laughs> men, rape by four black <laughs> men. It's bare weird because you're being stalked by this guy. They're trying to hide that she's been, they're mm. being stalked. That's the thing, she doesn't know a lot of she doesn't know the a gravity lot. of what is going on. Just tell her there's a lot of weirdos around here, but she's running around these dark corridors where no mm. one's there. You're thinking, what an idiot. But this is like the weirdest scene because he's so calculating mm. clever. I actually watched this film twice because what De Niro's character essentially does, Declan, the greatest determination he has is not being like a ripped fucking fucking geese because he is he's been in mm. prison for 14 years all he could do is read and work out as he says there's not a lot of things to yeah, do yeah. and work out and but read. his greatest weapon is getting into every single one of their psyche he's so good at doing and you it. see it's all pre-plotted out because there's that moment where he's talking to the wife for the first time and intimidating outside the house but when he sees the daughter come and he quickly drives away because yeah. she can't see his face before he does this little plan he goes to there with a dog collar doesn't he mm, like, so your dog. and then next scene when he meets the door he's smoking a spliff isn't he and, 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 and she's like oh you can't smoke grass here and he's like you know all about that don't you because it made my skin crawl especially the bit where they're talking about books like these it's books i've mm. never heard of to be honest like and he's like he describes his erection as a work of art it reminded me of that clunky way when you didn't know how to talk to a girl when you were young when you were like a teenager and you just yeah. sort of bluntly try and like bring steer it into yeah. sexual anything he's like do you mind if i put my arm around you and then she's just oh, oh mate she is putty in his hand uh, well, i guess so and then we get to the real weird bit where he's legit just putting mm. his thumbs in he's her. thumb fucking her yeah he's thumb fucking her and then he gets with her and just skedaddles yeah and like she goes she runs off but like, you, uh, you can tell from that scene like she is even more infatuated mm. with him and pretty much for the rest of the film now the rest of the family are like boarding up windows and shit running around with a gun scared yeah. she's like you know dad he's a nice guy like, yeah she's yeah. so transfixed on him and there's that scene where Nick Naughty's losing it, grabs her face. Oh, yeah, yeah. And she yeah, starts yeah. crying and he feels all bad. But I would be like, man, you should have fucking knocked her out. Can you imagine this crazy rapist guy is trying to kill you and rape your family and kill your wife and kill your daughter as well? And she's been like, like wanting to fuck him and standing up for him. There was a scene earlier where the mum's in a like art studio doing a shoot mm. with logos or whatever she does for a living. Some pretentious shit. A, gra a graphic designer, I think. But anyway, sorry for any graphic designers. But she's saying, oh, it's a flasher. And she's like, oh, I've been flashed before. What do you know about that, a flasher? Oh, you don't think I've been flashed before? Oh, well, I certainly didn't mean to insult you. I'm sure you've been flashed before. She seems to revel in the fact that she, I think, is an attractive... Well, I don't want to yeah. talk about 15, 16... But she's not 15 during the film. Yeah. yeah. You know, she's a young girl and she's yeah. starting to get fucking fanny tingles. And, you know, she's naturally... You start just sort of wanting to know. But she's also got that classic... You don't really Arrogance, know. Yeah. It's like a guy, it's like Jamie from In Between Us being like, oh yeah, fucking yeah, the fucked yeah, all the girls. Yeah, like, yeah. you know, you can tell really she doesn't know what she's talking about. She's saying, he didn't force himself upon me. Like, mm. And like, obviously for any dad, like, I'd go ballistic. Like that can be an awkward feeling around your daughter becoming sexual for the first time anyway. But when it's like, hey dipshit, this guy's fucking trying to kill us all, you fucking dumb cunt. Like, what are you doing? Yeah, De Niro's character is driving around in like, 
be yeah. really cool, like sick fucking red convertible. Pump. Yeah, and I love his like outfits. He's got like a little white black cap. Yeah, and a he looks like fun dude. Yeah, we're getting a bit of a background into his character because obviously Nick Nolte knows the law. He's working with the police chief to try and nick him for seemingly mm. nothing. They bring him in, and it's like a two-way mirror, and then they check all his finances and stuff. And it turns out he's got 30 big ones mm. in his bank account. Who is the police chief, by the way? Oh, Gregory it's Peck. R- no, it's no. Robert Mitchum. Oh, Robert Mitchum. The original Sorry. evil, scary dude, whatever you want to call oh, that's him. A good, that's a good little... Great nod yeah, to the original. Yeah. I love that. You just put the law in my hands, and I'm going to break your heart with it we find out his mum's passed away left in loads of money it carries on from the earlier scene do i look destitute to you like nick nolte is lost faith with the law and he's trying to go vigilante mode now declan so he finds a bumbling actually i'm not gonna yeah i'm not gonna gonna call him bumbling well, no, because he didn't finish the job, unfortunately. Oh, well, he came up against one of the biggest psychopaths in yeah, cinema history. Yeah, uh, I would say a, a very competent and cool private detective. Is it William Shatner? No. Who is it? I thought it was. No, it's not. It show. looks like him, though. It's John Don Baker yeah, and not William Shatner. Who's John Don Baker? A recognisable face that I had to look anyway, at IMDb for that. You know, and he's saying... We'll just hire three guys to beat mm. the shit out of him, basically. And Nick Nolte's against it, because all this shit's coming up about his history not being a very good lawyer in the first place. Because he talks about the fact that I don't know if I could kill a man, but I also kind of suspect, like, if you said to him, hey, press this red button, and he just dies, and no one ever has to know, you can never get in trouble. He would do it in a second. I think a lot of the time he's actually quite incredulous and full of shit when he's making out all these moral reasons. Like, ultimately as well, I don't think he has the balls to to really take it head on and he's quite happy to have three guys go up and beat him up for him it is the the, the whole element of fight and flight though. you know these cases in england where like a farmer or or someone will break into someone's home and they get a kitchen knife and mm. stab them like it's all well and good saying you would 100 percent do that but you would never know until it happens no you never know until it happens that particular time yeah, exactly if you're hung over and you're not expecting it you might be a pussy another time you might do the right thing you know it'd be fucking captain big dick just because you woke up on the yeah, right side of the yeah. bed that morning but anyway so he hires the three goons he's hiding behind some rubbish bins yeah like, that was stupid like, but it makes for a great tension as the scene unfolds and ends up battering the three goons after initially getting the shit kicked out of her yeah leaves them all on the floor dead and he's obviously watching behind the bins like oh shit he knocks over a yeah, bunch of stuff so stupid. and it's this great tense moment where you see robert de niro's character is walking slowly towards him it's completely empty at that time of night where sounds echo differently and he's like speaking in his southern draw voice Was saying bible are you there prosecutor <laughs> oh you know no, counselor you, counselor are you there i know you're behind there <laughs> and he's getting close <laughs> and you're like ah. could you be there could you be there <whistles> counselor I wonder if you're here. Ah, fuck it. If you were here, what's the fuck's the difference? Fuck it. But before we go to that, we should note before that Nick Nolte is having conscience problems, guilt problems. So he's agreed to hire the goons, but he wants to still be the nice guy. And he approaches De Niro's character in a restaurant and says, look, leave or something bad is going to happen to you. Is this a threat? And if you notice about the scene deck when he goes, can you just repeat that? Yeah. Could you repeat that? I say, if you don't get out of here, you're going to be hurting like you never dreamed. A threat. Yeah, you bet your ass it's a threat. Fast forward to the scene where he's riding a bin and he's like getting closer and closer and then he just throws the metal bar and goes, it doesn't matter anyway. And he just, it's just excellent. Like what a Ooh. scene. Like, he hired these three goons and that didn't work. And the guy kind of just suggests, we can just get three more goons, <laughs> which is kind of a funny idea as well. Or get four or six. Or four or six. Yeah. He's like, but he's kind of like, no, no, fuck no. <laughs> My lawyer friend's been telling me this whole time there's this best in the business 
absolute shark prosecutor attorney whatever he's been telling me to hire him the whole time so i'm just gonna hire him so he calls him up and once he says the name of the person he wants him to prosecute he says i'm afraid i can't help you he's already retained my services so you're like oh shit so when he goes to trial with him it turns out he's the one who gets a restraining order against him yeah and the lawyer is uh gregory Peck. gregory Peck. mr Bowden made good on his heinous and cowardly threat just as God arose to judgment to save all the meek of the earth, I hope and pray you will do the same, sir. Uh, yeah. Another brilliant nod to the original. And this is a time in both their careers where you wouldn't see him in an awful lot. So seeing him rolled out for anything mm. was brilliant. And as charismatic as the Robert De Niro is, for their short stints on screen, they fucking steal the show, man. You remember how great those actors yeah. are. I'm a law officer. It would be unethical of me to advise a citizen to take the law into his own hands. So, uh, I suppose you must have misunderstood me. Oh, I guess I must have. Well, pardon me, all over the place. The most memorable scene in the whole film for me, as the woman, clerk, that obviously is infatuated with Nick Naughty, has been stood up by him because obviously he's a bit Trying occupied to, uh, with his life falling apart. A rapist. So she's gone out to the bar and she comes across this interesting, rugged guy who just happens to be in the right time, right place, who she's going to decide to have a one night stand with. But he just so happens to be Robert De Niro's character, who knows exactly mm. who she is and mm. seeked her out. And you're expecting something bad to happen to her when they go back and they're starting to, you know, take off their clothes and back to have sex. But it's not the longest rape scene and maybe not one of the most horrifying rape scenes on paper. But for me, it's the worst rape scene of any film I've ever seen and the most horrific because of the level of the violence. You don't actually see the rape yeah, take place. The shadows, yeah. But you see when he handcuffs her to the bed and then you really hear and see in a close-up as he breaks her arm yeah. and she's screaming. Then he bends down and bites it's a chunk out of her oh, face yeah. and, and it kind of hit home to me how terrifying a proper violent rape must be like especially because she was seduced by him she was expecting just a good time mm -hmm. and it turned into the worst moment of her life in a heartbeat and it just it just fucks with me like no yeah. other rape scene nick nolte rushes to the hospital um he's been told that we've got a break because he's at his old tricks again as he walks through the door and he sees said clerk um and then it just dawns upon him it's getting worse and worse for nolte for nolte boy and he goes back to the private detective and he's probably at that last resort area so like just give me a gun like just mm. give me a gun and i'll you know shoot this guy and he's a bit like listen i could take you out shooting but you'll probably fuck it up yeah why don't i just be in your house 24 7 and they also realize because of his legal situation with robert de niro taking him to court that has meant he's going to have to have a hearing about possibly being disbarred yeah which means he's supposed to leave the state for two days yeah. so they go to the airport he pretends to get on a flight but then they sneak him back in and go back to the house with the private detective as well so they're all in the house and of course robert de niro is going to strike yeah, this is why i thought it was a bit sh i picked on him a little bit because i mm. was like his method of a alarm system times fish wire to a teddy bear. okay what would yours be why to get an actual alarm from where we're in on an hour's notice <laughs> like i thought it was quite genius uh i mean we never see how he how robert de niro's character ingeniously gets around it he just magically is in the house i'll tell you what i dressed would do. like the nanny with her yeah, fucking yeah, no, hair. I'll tell you that what. is also sorry one bit that took me out of the film a bit where i was like that's that i'll tell you what i enough. would do that colonel i'll tell what? you what 100 percent would do um that pussy dog julep's dog or whatever has mm. died it was shit mm. i would have gone out and fucking beastly guard them. great idea yeah. <laughs> like literally tanks do like... you know what that's the alarm you'd get on an hour's notice get yeah. a dog yeah exactly <laughs> but yeah no that was really stupid because i did watch the film first time yeah and i totally missed that he was the cleaner <laughs> it was just so out of place all of a sudden I think I looked away from the screen to look at my phone and all of a sudden who I thought was William Shatner was dead. <laughs> uh, and and then watching it for the second time today before I came here, I was like, so he's murdered the cleaner, put a wig on. And uh, also imitated her voice. But when you listen to it, it's just her voice. Cause it's that, not him doing her voice. Can you sleep, huh, Miss Graziella? Yeah, it's hurt. <sighs> you know, I think it's your humidity. 
It's so funny because it's like the back of the head and then all of a sudden he has But he still runs away. He kills um the poor PI and he kills the poor cleaner. Mm. Like the cleaner was seemingly like a family friend as well. So that was proper sad. And only... Really, I didn't give a shit about the cleaner. She was barely in it. I love that moment where they've gone downstairs. They're freaking out. The wife's seen De Niro running off out the, the house. Forest. They run downstairs. They see the scene of like the two people dead. They're slipping on the blood and it's just getting worse and worse. So they just say fuck it and they drive the fuck out of there. Now why do they get in a boat? And if you're a yeah, proper yeah, Simpsons yeah. viewer then you'll know that of course he has been holding on to the underneath the entire time. And he slips off, sees him on the boat and gets as high as his own little boat to funnel him. What was that? It's just a squall. I'll go check the anchor. Wait, Dan, don't go out. No, Dan. Now, look, everything is okay, all right? Yeah, we're on the river now, baby. It's just a squall kicking up. <laughs> well, Nick Nolte goes outside to kind of stop the boat because it's rocking mm. or... or They talk a lot of... Nau- Clean the poop deck. Yeah, they, they talk a lot of nau- nautical terms that didn't make any sense to me. Mm. But all of a sudden, he goes quiet and then, bang, he's inside the boat. Yeah. And this is where is his ultimate showground because, you know, he's a rapist, serial rapist, mm. and his object of desire, the whole film, three objects of desire is to fuck up Nick Nolte as much as humanly possible. The wife, who he says in a previous scene when he's outside with the dog collar, in a different life, we could be together. <laughs> and the daughter. So mm. he has, Nick Nolte is a top, top pussy. So he's not going to be able to do much anyway. Yeah, I mean, you know he's I mean? an intellectual, he's not the fighting type. I mean, if those three goons couldn't take him on, He's Nick Norton's yeah. character's not going to do shit. 100%. And then we get into this whole monologue about the wife trying to distract him. I know about loss as well. I know about lost time. And I just thought that was ridiculous. Like, as as Robert De Niro, you know, gets a cigar and spits on Nick Nolte. It did distract him, but he didn't buy it for a second. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the daughter's inside the hold and she has found lighter fluid. Just as he goes to light up his cigar, she sprays it and he fucking sets on fire. Oh, Obviously, great. we see a weird scene earlier where she throws boiling water on him, but it does not affect him because he's like, my, my family were raised in the circus. And he's holding a flare as it's melting. He's, so he I, nearly feels like supernatural. Like yeah, he's yeah. not even a human. He jumps in the water and then we think, thank fuck he's gone. But of course, yeah. he returns. Dramatic music still playing. You're like, he's coming Yeah. Back. Then Ooh, Nick no. Nolte and him have another little showdown. Nick Nolte's getting fucked fucked up by again the way. but this is one of my favorite ever shot film that one of the scenes coming up because the weather outside is going mad the 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 boat is going crazy and just as about as he's about to handcuff nick nolte the, the boat rocks so much that he's flipped over and it's a really really fucking cool effect with it. and i thought that's a fucking genius shot and then to top that off the next genius shot where he has a gun it then goes to like first person view what a great sequence mm. of shots but it's also such a great moment because it, he's truly revealed what a crazy over the top monster he is he's pulling out like his loudest craziest monologue <laughs> and now half his face is melted so he, he feels like a monster it feels like a horror film rather than a you know a serial killer movie or just a, a typical human villain he's gone the handcuffs have played a huge part in this film mm. If yeah. you think about it, metaphorically being handcuffed and sent to jail for 14 mm. years, maybe that he should have got out of. Handcuffed in the rape scene where he rapes the clerk. Handcuffed to the boat. So they both wash up on the shore and the Nero's character's like, tied to the to the, to the the metal thing on the boat, but they're still fighting. And he's trying his best to proper knock him out and it's not even hurting him. And then he goes, he goes like, the funniest bit, he goes, that restraining art is doing you no good. Good, you're within 500 yards. Ah, forget about that restraining order, counselor. You're well within 500 yards. <laughs> <laughs> 
counsellor. I was just cracking up. Like, anyway, <coughs> they've got rocks and everything. And like, Nick Nolte again, he's fucking making my blood boil. He pick, it takes him about an hour to pick up this rock. And it takes him a further three hours to raise mm. it downwards. Because I wanted to see him cave his head yeah. into the rock. Like, 100% I wanted to see that. And, and just as about, he's about to hit him, the wave washes the Nero's character out. But now we realise, shit, he's handcuffed and the ship is going down. And by this point, I think De Niro's character, he just doesn't care if he dies or not. Mm. He's just like, he's just accepted his fate. Will come with me. I'm bound for the promise land. I'm bound for the promise. He's screaming and going wild. And it's such a great scene as the family are at the shore and they're slowly just watching him get dragged down with the ship under the water as he's screaming just Chibberish. obscenities blah, 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 blah. and about quotes from the Bible yeah. and philosophy and just all sorts and then just weird jokes. <laughs> But I kind of feel like directing some part of him was content with the fact that he still probably ruined his life and ruined his family. Ultimately, what I think he wanted to do is somehow have Nick Nolte's character permanently trapped and then rape the daughter and his wife in front of him continuously. Oh my God, horrendous. Uh, that's what I think he wanted to do. <laughs> what a horrible idea. <laughs> And the look on your face as you were saying it. No, but that's, yeah, but that's, as, <laughs> yeah, but you know, that's testament to De Niro's performance yeah, that yeah. I was making shit like that up. Yeah, so it's just a great shot where we see the water going slowly up and he's like, and Mark, deliver me from evil. What an intense uh, film. And then we get a last little monologue from the daughter. Because if you hang on to the past, you die a little every day. And for myself, I know I'd rather live. We both just did an excel there. That is what you need to do when this film is done because it is an intense trip that grabs you by the dick and swings you from wall to wall for a good two hours and 15 minutes. What a fucking film. I think it goes without question that you recommend it. Yeah, have you... I don't want to drag this on too long. Have you seen the original as well? Yeah, great fucking film. This should be looked at in the future for the fucking Hollywood big wigs if they want to continue this remake train of how a good remake's done. Like, mm. you know, because... Get Martin Scorsese to do it. It might be because of recency bias, but I like... I have to fully rate that De Niro performance. It was fuck. It was a masterclass. Like, and it's also kind of one of the forgotten De Niro performances, but it's kind of like the forgotten Scorsese film as well mm. a remake a bizarre sort of homage to 1950s 60s filmmaking there's so many things about it that just feels like so out of place with the rest of his films it's such an oddity and such a novelty this film is amazing mm. it is fucking incredible and it's one of those films that you remember it's, it is so cinematic the the booming score the, like the over the top dramatic weather and the yeah. performances and it, it's one of those films where it's so good but you're kind of glad it's over when it ends so you can fucking relax it's legit like a Shakespeare play it's Brilliant. Yeah. Absolutely. That's an easy recommendation for Cape Fear. <laughs> <laughs>